Ай, ты хаугаш. А, мусор. Namibia, in the southwestern corner of Africa, is a relatively young nation. Gaining independence in the early 90s, today it is a republic known for calm political waters and a small population of only around 2.4 million inhabitants. It is famous for its vast, dramatic landscapes, friendly people and its incredible conservation success stories. The first country to incorporate the protection of its environment into its constitution, Namibia's citizen-centric approach is epitomized by its flagship community-based natural resource management program, which has in many respects set the standard for conservation in Southern Africa. This ensures that communities are at the forefront of protecting their natural heritage. Today, Namibia is home to the last population of free-roaming black rhinoceros outside of protected areas. In the northwestern Kunene and Irongo regions, harsh terrain and inhospitable environments are the setting for a remarkable story of the local recovery of a species that globally is on the brink of extinction. Without wildlife, it's like you are, you are a poor man. You, you, you have nothing. We have to preserve what we have today for the next generation. You know, this is what is keeping me going. Wildlife crime has far-reaching consequences and is more treacherous than it seems at the surface. It's operated by well-organized global syndicates. To combat wildlife crime involves a complex and multifaceted approach. To deploy such a plan requires a network of teams working together. Partnerships have long been the strength of Namibian conservation. This story is no different. It is about collaboration underpinned by a people-first approach and how this has resulted in effective conservation of the world's last truly free-roaming population of black rhinos. In the history of this corner of the world, there is a time referred to by some as the Yellow Tape era, for the yellow tape placed around crime scenes, a symbol of a time when groups were working in isolation. This was not a successful period in the fight against poaching. Today, three NGO partners working on the front line and in close partnership with the conservancies are Integrated Rural Development and Nature Conservation, Namibia Nature Foundation and Save the Rhino Trust. They remember the early days of isolation and now appreciate the value of good conversation driving smarter conservation. It was during the colonial era. The government not really trusting NGOs. The NGOs now also working with communities that the previous government regarded as poachers. It's like you make a jackal a, 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 a shepherd of your goat. I mean, imagine that. There was really no good meaning. I mean, you do your own thing, he doing his own thing, but you try to conserve the same one rhino that's standing there. I mean, you spend lots of money, he spent lots of money, I'm spending lots of money, instead of putting three dollar, three dollar together and do the same thing at once. So it was a waste of time, funding, and also dividing people. And in the end, there's two big, there's three big losers. The, but the biggest by far are the communities and conservation and of course the organizations ourselves. We weaker separated. Here in this harsh desert landscape where protection efforts are often slowed down by terrain, a success in the fight against rhino poaching can be found. Behind this success story is a vast network of passionate people and their combined efforts. But why? What happened in this secluded and desolate part of the world that would drive a need that would later rally government, civil society and communities alike to take up this cause. We meet the head of WWF Namibia, Chris Weaver, in the country's capital. Chris has been actively involved in conservation in Namibia for almost three decades. The time of, of crisis probably was in 2014, 13 and 14. Uh, we had 26 rhino poached in one year out there. The Ministry of Environment and Tourism uh, 
they had were not used to dealing with it, the police weren't used to dealing with it, the communities and the conservancies weren't used to dealing with it. The chaos around the response at that time was basically fragmented and it, it was not conducive to a coordinated effort to, to counter wildlife crime. Rhino conservation is a tough job. Monitoring them over inhospitable terrain in harsh conditions day in and day out requires extraordinary effort and courage. Underpinning the efforts is the hard work and unwavering perseverance of the conservation heroes at the front line. On a rhino tracking expedition in the Palenbach concession, which was once the epicenter of the crisis, Ims, a senior tracker with SRT, explains the day-to-day -day duties of being the boots on the ground. The typical day of mine would start probably at uh, 4.30. That would be my wake-up call and head off for a rhino drive. Whichever time we find a, a rhino, this is what we use first. So it's having drawings, blank drawings of a rhino, the two ears and the face. Apart from that, we'd be filling in the GPS coordinates, which is very helpful for the MET as well. And by the end of the month, we send these books back to, to our base and the base carries it through to MET. So we've got vehicle teams, we've got on the ground teams. Yep. And so yes, we, we, we are fighting a battle here but we are ready. Wildlife crime is a threat to Namibia's biodiversity, economy and people. Communities are the ones most critical in this fight and also the ones most negatively impacted. Namibia has over 20% of its land dedicated to community conservation. This has brought tourism and development, critical benefits to often desolate rural societies. Communities who live with wildlife in their backyards are the eyes and ears in every corner, no matter how remote. They are the custodians of our natural heritage. Um, you have these communities that have always been living together with these animals. The Brano Rangers, um, the community game guards, are members of the community. They are the ones that go out in the field where they are monitoring um, wildlife, um, recording incidences that are happening within the conservancy and reporting it back. The community sees that it's needed to have these guys out in the, in the field. A lot of things change just because of the conservancy. You can see that pipe there. It's the conservancy who put that water into, into the village. So wherever you, if you travel around and you meet uh, local communities, people, and you are wearing this t-shirt, oh, you, this, and then say, ah, oh, that's, that's our program. Since the dark days of 2014 and 2015, the situation has changed dramatically. Better coordination amongst NGOs and government, improved enforcement capacity, a renewed focus on working with the communities, and most importantly, the boots on the ground. As a result, by the start of 2020, the northwest of Namibia had enjoyed over two and a half years without any rhino poaching. However, as the world shut down, under the weight of a global pandemic, opportunistic criminals took advantage of the confusing times and two rhino cows were killed near Puros. It happened in the light of a full moon, which makes it easier for poachers. This is one of the reasons why it's called the Blood Moon. Despite this setback, the fight continues. I think the vision for the future is learning from this process and building on it. We have all these success stories in Namibia mm. just because we changed the way we were working. We talk more, we plan together, we, if there is an issue, we confront it all together, um, and, and that has closed all the gaps. We hope the future of the rhino is certain. From our side, we have a belief that it is certain. As long as we are on the boots here on the field, I think we'll make it big time. In this Kunene, we are fighting a war, which uh, we believe we will fight it till the end, until it's the last power we have in our bones. The well-being of people is so intricately tied to nature. And in the Kunene region, in the northwest of Namibia, lies an example of how we can win the battle against wildlife crime if we work together.